Lesson 5, Optimal Fluids to Support Brain Function. So humans can survive without food for several weeks, but without water, life would end in three to five days. The body is composed of 70% water, with the brain having over 85% of its mass as water. Water is involved in nearly every process in the body, from digestion to absorption to circulation and excretion. Water transports nutrients and oxygen to the cells of the body and is important in the regulation of body temperature. When people are thirsty, they rarely drink enough water to cover what has been lost, so we are often in a state of chronic dehydration. If water is not consumed, toxins can build up in our system, often leading to headaches and other discomforts of the body. Without water, we would poison ourselves with our own metabolic waste. Obtaining quality water is important. Many contaminants are found in tap water, including lead, iron, copper, fluoride, and arsenic, as well as herbicides, pesticides, and chemicals that find their way into our water through the soil. Better choices are bottled water, but there are concerns over the leaching of toxic materials from the plastic materials they are stored in. Aside from obtaining adequate water intake to maintain optimal hydration, we also want to drink liquids that provide nutrients which support the body. In this lesson, we will discuss what fluids will support your health and vitality versus those that do not. Honestly, I probably cannot express enough the importance of proper hydration for optimal brain and body function. The body can only survive for three days without water, but even slight dehydration can begin to create a situation where the body becomes stressed, leading to fatigue, emotional instability, and poor memory. Drink eight or more eight ounce glasses of clean water daily to flush toxins from the body. Drink plenty of water even if you're not thirsty. The organs, especially the brain, become dehydrated long before thirst develops. Dehydration is the result of less cellular exchange occurring across the cell membrane, which ultimately will result in greater toxicity. Given that most people enjoy consuming a variety of beverages, this lesson will explore the various options of vital fluids that will support your brain function. In this lesson, we will discuss water, coffee, green tea, coconut, aloe vera juice, and green juicing. As a note of caution, eliminate from your diet any colas or juices with additives and colors and anything containing caffeine. As noted in our earlier lesson, 80 to 85% of the mass of the brain is comprised of water and its proper function relies on an abundant access to water. Interestingly, the body only has to lose 1 to 2% of its water content to generate a signal of thirst in the brain. Dehydration at this level is the equivalent of a 5% decrease in cognition, which is why we link dehydration to symptoms associated with brain fog. Furthermore, two-thirds of people are chronically dehydrated. Most people drink less than 32 ounces per day, yet we lose more than that per day, which puts us in a state of chronic dehydration. This is why using the formula of drinking half of your body's weight in ounces in water per day is so important, as this is truly the equation to ensure optimal hydration. So what makes us dehydrated? Stress is one example, but we'll discuss more about that in Lesson 9. In order to be inspired to consume water, it always helps to understand why it's so important in the brain and body. So water is essential in supporting the electrical activity of the brain, which is directly correlated to thought and memory. Brain cells need twice as much energy as other cells in the body, and water is the most efficient way to get this energy. Second, water is essential for hormone and neurotransmitter production. Third, the brain cannot store water, so you must consume water continually throughout the day to be optimally hydrated. Fourth, chronic dehydration can shrink the brain, as been shown in brain scans. Competitive bodybuilders go to extreme measures to dehydrate the brain and body prior to their event. Oftentimes they experience dry mouth, lightheadedness, irritability and restlessness, rapid heartbeat, rapid breathing, and altered behavior such as anxiety and confusion. 
I had the opportunity to see the brain scan of one of these individuals and it revealed severe global hypoperfusion or low blood flow in the brain. One look at that image and I vowed to become more mindful of my daily water consumption. And finally, water helps to remove toxins from the blood, including pollution, radiation, heavy metals, and pesticides. So these are all very important reasons to remember to continually drink water throughout the day. So I can't do a lesson on vital fluids for brain function and not discuss coffee. So coffee is a stimulant that makes people feel jittery. So I don't advise consuming this beverage if your goal is to create a calm, relaxed, focused state and clear mind. Coffee is loaded with toxic chemicals, so people who are sensitive to chemicals should not consume coffee as it tends to make your mind less productive and efficient. Given that anxiety disorders are one of the most prevalent psychiatric disorder, impacting up to 40% of the population, and given that many of us are impacted with navigating stress in our lives, whether it occurs internally or externally, my recommendation would be to minimize or eliminate caffeine altogether. As noted in lesson four, caffeine is one of the factors that depletes our magnesium, one of the key minerals that helps us to feel calm and balanced. In addition to coffee being a stimulant, it taxes our adrenal glands, which release adrenaline, which is a potent brain toxin. Caffeine can also result in vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, reducing blood flow to the brain, and it creates muscle tension in the body. Ultimately, caffeine robs the body of energy, creating fatigue. And a 200 milligram cup of coffee has a half-life of five to eight hours. So when I'm working with people who have sleep issues, we always have to eliminate caffeine consumption after three o'clock. So my first question to most clients who consume caffeine is if they require it to wake up and function in the morning. If the answer is yes, then I want to investigate further and discover what area of the body we need to support so that we can restore it to its natural energetic state. This may mean that I need to evaluate the effectiveness of their sleep hygiene, their approach to managing the stress in their life, to review their diet and nutrient intake, and to see the time and duration of their fitness program so that it supports the body having energy instead of depleting the body of energy. Truth be told, water will actually provide the body with more energy than chemically laden caffeine. But many people who rely on coffee for energy may be initially resistant to this concept. However, once we begin to minimize their caffeine consumption, it often results in very positive changes in that person's life. We discussed the benefits of consuming coconut in lesson four, whether that's cooking with coconut oil, using coconut butter, eating dried coconut, or drinking coconut water. So it's fitting to include it in this chapter of optimal fluids for your brain. Coconut water is a nutrient dense beverage, which is loaded with essential minerals for optimal regulation of your blood sugar. It has powerful antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial properties, which will support your immune system and overall health. It's a wonderful drink to consume if you're dehydrated, as the electrolytes will quickly restore your cellular energy, and this vital fluid will support digestion in the body. As coconut enters the mitochondria, it will support cellular revitalization and overall energetics. So my recommendation would be to find a coconut water which is low in sugar. This means when reading the label, it has less than five grams of sugar per serving. I've always been a big proponent of aloe vera for its healing effects on the body, both externally and internally. Aloe acts as an astringent, emollient, antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial preparation. Many people think about aloe vera gel applied topically to the skin to heal burns and wounds while stimulating cellular regeneration. However, when taken internally, it helps to lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation, soothe stomach irritation, and aids healing of the digestive tract. It can help support the healing of stomach disorders, including ulcers, constipation, colitis, and colon issues, as well as arthritis. So I often recommend my clients take a fourth of a cup of aloe vera juice daily as a way to support the digestive tract. If you or your client enjoys tea, you can add green tea as a powerful way to support brain health and longevity. 
Green tea contains compounds called polyphenols, including phytochemicals that have antioxidant, antibacterial, antiviral, and health-enhancing properties. EGCG is a polyphenol found in green tea, which is able to penetrate the body's cells and protect the cellular DNA from damage and harmful free radicals. Green tea has wonderful healing properties, including its ability to lower cholesterol and blood pressure, enhance memory and concentration, it protects the telomeres, which is the DNA at the ends of the chromosomes that, when destroyed, signals cellular aging, it supports weight loss by regulating blood sugar and insulin levels, it boosts immune function via its antibacterial and antiviral properties, and it improves bone mineral density and its ability to protect cellular DNA confers its anti-cancer properties. So green tea comes from the dried leaves of the tea plant. Black tea is created through fermentation, which destroys the polyphenols, rendering it a bit less active as an antioxidant. I often recommend my clients visit a website called Harney and Sons to select from a range of wonderful teas to add to their collection. My personal favorite is the hot cinnamon spice tea, which is always enjoyable around the holidays. My last recommendation in the Vital Fluids lesson is to consume plenty of fresh live juices. Juicing is extremely beneficial in supplying nutrients from fruits and vegetables into your diet. They help to cleanse and nourish the body and are loaded with antioxidants. It contains virtually all of the plant's health-promoting components as they are made from the raw fruits and vegetables. Because these are from live plants, the ingredients are in a form that are easy to digest and absorb. Green drinks made from leafy greens, such as kale, spinach, parsley, celery, and cucumber, should be consumed on a daily basis as they are rich in vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. These drinks are loaded with chlorophyll, which helps to purify the blood, build red blood cells, detoxify and heal the body, and supports oxygenation of the body. Live juicing can serve as a powerful detoxifier, which will reduce inflammation, boost immune function, enhance focus and mental clarity, support weight loss by balancing metabolism, and removing waste and body fat, improving digestion, and is a powerful way to stave off aging and elevate cellular energy levels. A number of problems that people face when they are aging may be attributable to nutritional deficiencies. This may be due to malabsorption problems or the reduced ability of the body to assimilate nutrients. Juicing is a wonderful way to address these issues, allowing for the repair and regeneration of cells. So a few important notes on juicing. First, once fresh juice is made, it should be consumed immediately as it can lose nutrients by sitting for long periods of time. I typically recommend a fresh juice be consumed within 30 minutes. Second, buy organically grown produce, which is grown without the use of pesticides or other harmful chemicals. Third, if you juice on your own, wash your produce using a vegetable wash to remove any residues. And fourth, rotate your vegetables and fruits to get a variety of micro and macronutrients into your diet.